Bodies on Wilk versus Norris. Step forward, please. Now, the next case. Plaintiff Deborah Wilk is suing defendant Steve and Patricia Norris for their dog biting the plaintiff's son. Your Honor, this is number 92 on the calendar in the matter of Wilk versus Morris. See, please. Mrs. Wilk, Norris is your neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's your little yes. boy, Adam. Yes. And you're in your kitchen, and Adam wants to go and play with the Norris's daughter. A little while later, their daughter comes over to your house and tells you there's been a terrible accident. You go charging over to the Norris's. And what do you see when you get there? Well, I see my son laying in Steve's arms, and he's got a wash rag pressuring the wound on the face because the lip is hanging. And so I see him bleeding, and there is a lot of blood with a head injury. How did this injury happen? The dog bit him. My dogs were laying in the front by the front door. Your, your yes, dogs, my dogs, dogs in the house. You remember that, Adam? Yes. Want to tell me about it? Come up here. Because I have to ask you some questions first before you can tell me what happened. So I, how old are you? I think you're about eight. Now. Do you know the difference between the truth and a lie? Yes. Tell me the difference. A lie is a story that you make up, and the truth is what happened. If I were to hold up this object and tell you that this was an elephant, would that be the truth or a lie? A lie. Now, I want you to look over there to this handsome gentleman over here. If I were to tell you that my court officer was a short, fat, Bald guy. Would that be the truth or a lie? A lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bert. Now, if I were to tell you that the judge in this case is a young, beautiful woman, <laughs> would that be the truth or a lie? The truth. Yes. <laughs> Very smart boy. I want you to tell me what happened over there with those dogs when you went over there to play at the Norris's house? Well, I was in the kitchen with, um, Jocelyn and... Is that the little girl? Okay, go ahead. And then Sonny came in. Sonny is? The dog. The dog? What happened? Hmm? Um, I was there. And um, Spark the bunny came in, and they started to like growl at each other, and then Sparky bit me. Where did he bite you? On your mouth? Let me take a look. All right. I'd like to indicate that there is a scar right over here. Right over here. Come on, tissue. Okay. Did it hurt when he bit you? Hurt? Did you go to the hospital? Yeah? Yes. Do you remember what they did for you at the hospital? They put me in the emergency room and they like stitched it up. Did that hurt? Yeah? I was, they put me to sleep so I wouldn't feel it. Would you like to go sit down? Hmm? Bird, would you take him over here? Sure. So now we have this terrible accident. And quite frankly, I don't know what the issue is in this case. Your dog, with this child in your house, you're certainly responsible for your dog. Right. Did you pay? And no. She says no. It's no, my responsibility. No, sir, no, no, I have no, that right not. here in writing, and yeah. I offered to pay then, and then it was you know everything was fine. We were still. Well, let best me hear. Friends. Let me see what you have that says that she doesn't want you to pay. Right here, ma'am. This was a letter it. delivered in my mailbox when after we got in the argument. Show it to her. Show it to her. <sighs> That's exactly the letter I wrote, letting her know that I accepted full responsibility at the hospital because they told me I had to accept it. I even went over there several times to talk to her. You'll see in the letter where I stated there's 100% responsibility on the part of the dog owner. I have a signed statement here by Patricia Norris saying that she, her dog did bite my son. Oh, well, that poor kid was waking up screaming that first night. I had to wake him up to give him medication because of the high rate of infection into his mouth. <laughs>